Thanks, Bernie, for the update. Thank you, team, for a beautiful time of worship. I, I know people need music, and they need music with a message, and that was just wonderful this morning, so thank you so much. You will catch Eric and Lauren uh, on, our, on our Facebook page doing a wonderful song this past week, too, and there are some other posts out there, and some other people are, are making some music and look forward to pouring more music out there for you. I'm not going to, but they are. So... Um, if you didn't stand up wherever you are, please stand up and stretch before I start preaching because, you know, I I know it'll happen otherwise. So, but I've got to talk to the kids for a minute or two. Um, I haven't seen you and I miss you. I I did talk to one of you on the phone this week. Hi, Hannah. If you're out there watching, it's good to talk to you on the phone. And uh, I'm, I'm calling people's houses, so maybe if I talk to your mom or dad or something, uh, say, uh, I want to say hi to Pastor Matt. I'd really like that. I, I, um, I was looking for something this past week, and I was afraid I lost it, but I found it. I have this can, and uh, well, in it are some of the marbles I used to have. And I was really afraid I lost my marbles, but I found them. So um, anyway, when I was a kid for a couple of years, we played a lot of marbles. Now, people play marbles different ways. But uh, the way we do it is, is there was a little hole, and you'd have competition between you and somebody else, or maybe three or four of you would play. And, and the first one to get their marble into the hole was a winner. And usually we played marbles for keeps, meaning that if you played marbles against other people, um, the winner got to keep all the marbles. That, that wasn't fun when you'd lose, but it was really fun when you'd win. And we had different kind of marbles, um, all kinds of different colors. This one looks better than it is because it looks like a steely, but it's not. We used to have some steelies, but I can't find any steelies in here anymore. They, they were little steel balls. The rest of these are, are glass balls. Here's an old boulder I had, too. I only found one boulder. I must have played for keeps with my boulders and lost all but one. But the thing that I really wanted to show you, there was a man a minister in the Christian Reformed Church who, who, who wrote a story called The Blue Marble. And it's probably the most famous thing ever written by a Christian Reformed minister. His name was Jake Epica, and he wrote a story about the blue marble. And he always kept a marble that looked a lot like that one in his pocket. He, he was like me in that when he was a kid, he played marbles. He said he even won some, uh, a competition once. So anyway... But he always went around and kept a blue marble in his pocket. And if you look at that marble, it looks a lot like the world. There's there's a picture of the world out there. And a lot of people like that picture of the world that was taken, taken so you could see the whole world. It's taken from space. And it's a beautiful picture. And he carries, or used to carry, he's not around us anymore. He's with Jesus but he used to carry that, that marble in his pocket all the time to remind everybody that the whole world is in God's hands. And he would use it to tell other people whenever he'd reach in his pocket and pull out his marble, he, they'd say, why do you have that marble? And he says, because I want you to know the whole world is in God's hands. There, there, there's a song that goes like that. He's got the whole world in his hands. And Jesus has the whole world in his hands. And we need to remember that today. Okay? Well, I'm going to share a message with, with everyone. Um, it's based on Psalm 20. So if you have your Bibles with you, pull a Bible out. If you don't have a Bible, we'd love to get you one. If you have a Bible from maybe when you were young and and you haven't updated a Bible and gotten a newer translation, we'd love to provide you with one because the Bible still speaks loudly and clearly, and that's where we turn. So in just a minute, I'm going to turn to Psalm 20. So join me there. Psalm 
Psalm 20, just about in the dead center of the Bible. Listen to the word. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all of your plans succeed. May, may we shout for joy over your victory and, and lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant you all of your requests. Now this I know. The Lord gives victory to his anointed. He answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Lord, give victory to the king. Answer us when we call. Let's pray together. Lord, we hear so many voices, so many voices. We want to hear from you. That's true always, Lord, especially now. We want to hear from you. May it be, Lord, may it be. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. You know, re remember those commercials on TV where, where that guy was advertising a, a cell company and he would always say, can you hear me now? You probably remember that. I, I guess the same guy is out there making commercials, but now for a, a different uh, cell carrier. I, I, I guess, um, I guess um, it was the case that maybe this one's, you can hear him better. I don't know. But he'd asked that question before, can you hear me now? Well, it's not all that important if we hear him. But a lot of people really want to hear from God right now. And if we're going to hear from God, we say the best way to be listening for God is to be listening to what he says in his word, to, to keep turning back to the Bible, because how are we going to hear God if we ignore what he has already spoken in the past? And so this morning, we're listening to a specific part of the Bible. We're, we're listening to Psalm chapter 20. And I want to do something real simple this morning. I want to ask who, what, why, when, where. Who, what, why, when, where. So if you're a person who writes things down, it's really simple that way. We're going to start with the who. If you take a look at the psalm um, and you listen carefully to it, who is it for? Who is it written to especially? Now, at our house, sometimes I think that we are the Amazon uh, uh, distribution center. Not the distribution center, but where they drop the packages off. Because so many packages come to our house all the time. They do. They come from Amazon. They come from UPS. They come from the Postal Service. Because everybody at our house seems to be um, ordering something all the time from somewhere. And now, of course, they bring the package, they drop it off at your door. And, and before it even gets in our house these days, well, we're wiping it down with antibacterial stuff because who in the world uh, had their hands on this? So we wipe it off. But then the first thing you do is you look at the label. Who is it for? Who is it for? That's what you want to know, who it's for. And usually it's not for me, but it's for somebody in the family. But even more than that, some, sometimes you, you, you get mail... And once in a while, not too often, but once in a while, you even get something that's handwritten. You get a handwritten envelope. And, and when you see that handwritten envelope, it happens so rarely anymore, quickly you look at it and say, who's it for? Who's it to? And, and it's pretty exciting these days to get something that's handwritten from somebody because it just doesn't happen all that much anymore. Who's it for? I remember at Christmas time, lots of times, uh, you know, you put the presents under the tree, and especially when you got kids, kids are looking at, at those presents, and they're looking at the name tag, who's it for? And lots of times, if there was a big present, 
Who's that big one for? Who's that big one for? Now, my wife's kind of the opposite. Whenever I give her something good, it's usually in a little box. Now, now I've, a couple times, I, I've, I've done okay. I've done okay at that. And uh, given her a little box, and she's been pretty happy with it. Just so you know, today we've been married 40 years. I must have gotten married awfully young, and so my wife. Um, one of us doesn't have a wrinkle on our face or a gray hair on our head, but it, this is not the one. So happy anniversary, dear. Uh, find a tie, because when I come home, I'm going to put on the tie, you get all dressed up, and we're going to go out to the most expensive restaurant in town, sit in their parking lot, and eat a hamburger. So that's the plan for today. <laughs> Who is it for? Now, there's a sense whenever you read the Bible, you say, well, well, I'm reading it, and it's for me. And there's truth to that. But say, say you're reading in the New Testament and you're reading the, the letters of the Apostle Paul and you're reading that letter and seeing who it's uh, written to. You can, if you understand the first people it went to, then you can better apply it to you. Lots of times you understand it and apply it better if you know that original people it was written to. Now, if you take a look at this psalm, the first question we're asking is who? Who is it for? And first of all, if you read it carefully, you discover that this was written by somebody, and it's not just a psalm, it's a prayer. If you look at it, it's a prayer. And specifically, it's a prayer for the king. Now, you really you sense that if you listen carefully, and you hear in verse 6, Now this I know, the Lord gives victory to his anointed. And then you come to the end of the psalm and it says, Lord, give victory to the king. It's really a prayer, especially for the king. Okay? It's a prayer for the king. Now, the psalm is written in such a way that the person who wrote it is praying for the king, specifically for the king of Israel, for the leader of Israel. God bless the king. Give the king everything that he needs. Bless him. You come to the New Testament, and when you get to the New Testament, the Apostle Paul says, I want you to be praying for those who are in leadership. I want you to pray for your leaders, for those who rule over you. I want you to pray for them. And so in the Old Testament, they were told to pray for the king. You get to the New Testament, they're told to pray for their leaders. And I think this is a critical time that we be praying for our leaders. So the first way you, we want to apply this is say, remember to be praying for those who have to make important decisions. Those are political leaders. Those are, are uh, leaders in the private sector. Those are people in the medical field. Pray for those who are leading. Now here in Michigan, we're really in an interesting spot. When you come to praying for our leaders, we have a president and we have a governor, and I just get the feeling that they don't like each other very much. That's the feeling I get. They seem to disagree about everything. And I know a number of people out there who are really happy with what the president does and say, oh, remember to pray for him. And I also know Christians, Christians believing people who aren't happy with what he does. And those people have to be reminded to pray for him. But there are people out there who are, are supporters of the president and, and like him very much, and, oh, I can pray for him. But on the other hand, uh, we're also told not to pick and choose and say, I'll pray for him, but I won't pray for the governor. There are other people out there who like the governor very much, and they don't like what the president is saying. I'll pray for her, but I won't pray for him. God does not allow you to pick and choose. If the Apostle Paul said to pray for the emperors of his day who were godless people, you and I really need to be praying for our leaders, even the ones you don't agree with and the ones you don't like very much. You need to be praying for them. We've got to be praying for them often, regularly. Pray for them. You say, what do you pray? You, you pray that God by his mighty spirit will lead them and guide them and give them wisdom and direct their paths so they do what's right and best and good. Pray for them. 
So when you read the psalm, so when you read the psalm and and you read through that psalm, it is, first of all, I, I really believe it's a prayer for the king of Israel that God will bless the king. But it's not only for the king. As you read through this, you can certainly apply it to yourself. None less than John Calvin said, God commands his people in general to pray for kings. This prayer is for believers whenever we are threatened by danger. So if you feel threatened by danger, John Kelvin says this prayer is for you. You pray this prayer. Pray it. Pray it for the kings. Pray it for the leaders. Pray it for the people who have extreme responsibility placed on their shoulders right now. Pray for them. But pray for yourself as you go through difficult circumstances. Pray for you. Pray for others. Pray this. And what are you praying for? Pray that the Lord will answer you. Praying that the Lord will protect you. Praying that the Lord will send you help. Praying that the Lord will grant you support. Praying that God will remember you, accept you. Praying that God will give you the desires of your heart. Praying that God will make your plan succeed. We're praying that God will bless you and keep you. That God will protect you. That God will give you everything that that you need. That the blessing of the Lord God Almighty will be upon you every day of your life. And she can literally pray this prayer and pray that the Lord will keep me and you in the day of distress. And that day is now. It is certainly now. So, step back. First of all, we're saying, who should we be praying for? Pray for your leaders. Pray for people around you. Pray for yourself. What do you pray? Pray that the Lord will bless us and keep us and protect us and guide us. You can literally just read through this prayer and you can put names in there and pray that way. Now why? Why? Why does he pray this prayer in the first place? Because he knows that even though a person be king, even though a person is the absolute monarch of a land, even though that person has power, influence, clout, even if that person be king, that person is absolutely dependent upon God. That person might yet not even know it, but that person is dependent on God. The fact of the matter is that no matter who you are, people need the Lord. Even the king needs God. We thought we had come so far. These days we know so much. We've traveled rapidly down the information highway. Technology has rocketed, literally, and figuratively, right out of this world. Ah, we've learned so much. We've done so much. Medicine and health care. Ah, our country is second to none. We have money. We have affluence. We have resources. We have power. And yet the whole world has come to a screeching halt. But we still don't get it. We hear constantly, and this is okay, don't get get me wrong in the first part of this. We hear constantly, wash your hands, cover your cough, keep social distancing, stay home. We hear those things, and that's fine. And then we hear this, and it's said in two different ways. One is, is so that we can beat this thing. And the other is, then we will beat this thing. And some are going so far to say, is we're going to lick this thing. And some people are even saying things like this, you know that together we will beat this, and we will even kick it in the backside. Really? We can pull that off? We can do that? If at the very least... 
people would say, by the grace of God, with the help of God, with the blessing of God, the researchers will discover the cure. With the blessing of God, we'll overcome this. Pray about this. May may God direct us and and lead us through this. But don't say that we will do this. Haven't we learned yet? Haven't we heard yet? After all this, we still are not wise. We are still not honest and we are still not humble. This is what we are going to do? We can do it by ourselves? We still don't know. Now I've got to stop there. I'm generalizing and I'm generalizing terribly. Because I know for a number of you, that's not true at all. You're just the opposite of what I've just said. You know that your only hope is with God. In life and in death. You know that. And a number of you have have treasured these words. The thing that gives you courage, the thing that gives you confidence, the thing that gives you ability to make it through life is knowing that you are not your own, but you belong, body and soul, in life and in death, to your faithful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has fully paid for all my sins with his precious blood. He has set me free from the tyranny of the devil. He watches over me in such a way that not a hair can fall from my head without the will of my Father in heaven. In fact, all things must work together for my salvation. A number of you have lived with that. You have hope today, even though this is dark. You've not, you haven't been saying, I can do this myself. I can make it through on my own. I have the ability. I have the strength. I have what it takes. You know it's with God. By the grace of God, with the strength of God, with the blessing of God. You know that. You know that. So step back with me. We said, who is this prayer for? (laughs) Pray it for our leaders. Pray it for your friends. Pray it for yourself. Pray God's blessing. Who is it for? It's for us. What are we praying? We're praying that God will protect us, that God will keep us, that God will lead us, that God will give us victory, that God will bless us. Why are we praying it? Because we're not all that strong. We're not as strong as we like to think we are. People need the Lord. When do we pray it? Well, there's a part of us that wants to say, well, always. You're always supposed to pray, right? The Bible tells us that. You're always supposed to pray. Keep praying. But look, look carefully. Look look at that first first. It says this. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. Pray when times are difficult. Now, it's true that that sometimes we forget to pray when, when times are good. We do. Uh, When things are going our way, when the blessings are coming, when everything's good, we pulled it off. We're all right. But when distress comes, when the day of trouble comes, and that day does come, okay? The day of trouble comes. It usually comes into our lives or families one by one. Now it's hitting all of us. And I know that a lot of you have other things going on in your lives right now too. I realize that. But in the day of distress, call on the name of the Lord. Now, sometimes some of us have been critical of people who, who turn to the Lord when times are tough. And it's true that the Lord doesn't want us just to turn to him when, when times are tough and then forget about him in the rest of life. He doesn't. Sometimes we call that foxhole religion. Turn to God uh, when you're in the foxhole, and then once you're out of danger, you forget about him. God doesn't want that. But sometimes, sometimes, it's in the day of distress that people turn to the Lord. And they mean it, and they're serious about it. And they find out that God is there, and God is 
real. And so if you're a person who really hasn't paid any attention to God or not much attention to God or haven't, whatever, and say, well, I, I can't because, you know, I've, I haven't been close to God. I've drifted away. I haven't paid any attention to him. I don't care about But now, maybe you're hearing his voice. Can you hear me now? Maybe you're hearing him. And don't say, well, I, I, have, I can't come. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. There was this minister who um, who got to know this other guy, and anyway, they were sitting down uh, having coffee one day, and and they got talking. And this man had been in the church his entire life; he'd been in ministry his whole adult life. And he's talking to this man, and he says, "Well, what about you?" Um, and this man who was sitting across from him he says, "Yeah, um, I guess I went to church as a kid, but then then I walked, you know, I've been away and." I haven't lived a very good life, and I, I, and I guess I just stopped believing it. And he said, what? What would you stop believing? Did you stop believing in God? Did you stop believing in Jesus? He says, well, no. Well, I still believe in God. I still believe in Jesus. But I stopped believing that God cared about me. Why would God forgive me. And Jesus is the one who said, come to me. And he didn't say to perfect people, come to me. He didn't say to people who were out without any faults, come to me. He, he says to us, I want you to come. The day of distress is here. And, and if you don't call on God, if you haven't been looking to God, if you've been trying to do it yourself, if you think you're just too bad or whatever it is, don't believe it. It's not true. In the day of distress, which is today, look to him. Listen for his voice. Pray this prayer. It's for you. It's for you. So we covered the who and the what and the why and the when. One more quick question. Where? Now this one's really a little bit different. I have to be honest. My question is, where do we put our trust? Where have we been putting our trust? Some, verse 7, some trust in horses and some, in, no, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but we trust in the name of our God. Horses and chariots were the most fearsome weapons of war in that day. If you, had forces, if you had horses and chariots, you could be confident. If you didn't have horses and chariots, you were afraid. And the psalmist says, as some people put their trust in those things. Mm -mm. We're putting our trust in the name of the Lord our God. Now I want to be careful here. We as a church believe that God's blessing is in, comes in every area of life. In ancient Israel, even though they were not to put their trust in their horses and chariots, they were to put their trust in God, they still had armies. Now, the prophets looked forward to the day when, when the sword would be pounded into a pruning hook. Looked forward to that day, wanted that day. But God never said to them, get rid of all your fighting men. He didn't say that. And today, I, I guess as American citizens, we, we know we have our military defense, we have our police forces, we have our firefighters, we have those people out there, and, and thank God for them. We have our medical people out there doing their work. Thank God for them. And you think of all those different people, and we do depend on them. A month ago, I went to the doctor because I knew I was sick. You go to the doctor. We do those things. We thank God for educators and things we learn. But we don't say, we're going to do this by ourselves. We can pull it off. 
We don't put our ultimate trust in these things, but we pray, Lord God Almighty, bless us. Bless the doctors, bless the leaders, bless, bless, bless all of those who are out there fighting these things. Bless them, keep them safe. We don't dare just trust in ourselves. And then we look at our own lives and we say, Lord, I can trust in myself so much, but not very much. We need you. We need you to bless us and to keep us, to protect us. So today, so today, keep praying. Pray for those who are our leaders. Pray that God will grant them wisdom. Pray for your loved ones. Yeah, pray for yourself. Pray that the Lord will answer us now in our distress. Pray that the name of the Lord our God will protect us, that he will support us, that he will remember us, that he will give us the desires of our heart, that he will watch over us and keep us now and always. Pray that the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ will be experienced in our lives right now. And so may God bless you May God keep you. May God protect you. May God smile upon you and may God grant you in the midst of this distress his perfect peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. And I hope you can join me and say amen. Our prayers continue to go out to you. We, we keep um, remembering you. I know there are a number of people from church that are praying for each, uh, one another every day. Keep doing that. Keep turning back to the word for balance in, in, in this time of distress. Keep reminding yourself of what God has said. And we're still here, so feel free to reach out to us. And we pray that um, God will bless you. And so once again, remember that Cottonwood Church is here. And may God continue to grant uh, us the strength we need to, to be able to serve you. And we hope and pray that God blesses you richly. Thanks for joining us today.